Hello, I'm Dave Abram. And I'm Kristen Legata. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this episode, we'll sit down with State's Attorney Wes Adams and tell you about a new way the county will attack snow. But first, making headlines this week. We have big news for Odenton. This week, the giant food opened for business at Odenton Shopping Center. And as we reported before, this is a major step towards making Odenton Town Center a reality. The new store boasts 63,000 square feet of space, a marketplace produce department, pharmacy, PNC Bank, and of course, Starbucks. Gotta have Starbucks. Starbucks. And this is really a great moment for the community. And uh, I hope you're as excited as I am. And I know this is gonna be a great store for a, a long time to come. Now remember, Dave, in addition to several new apartment communities opening, we'll have the All-American Steakhouse and Sports Theater already open and Ruth's Chris Steakhouse under construction. That's a lot of steak. Things are happening. That is a lot of a steak. A lot of steak. And, and you know what? Things are happening. I love the All-American Steakhouse, the one that's down in uh, Edgewater. Yes, I've been to that one too. It's a lot Great. of fun. It's always Great. packed too. I can give you guys a tip out there. The barbecue chicken potato skins. Barbecue chicken, that sounds good. They're great. How do you like your steak done? Oh, medium. Medium. I go medium rare. Yeah, I will too. It depends on how I'm feeling. But. Like my dad says, as long as I, I, I want it just past mooing. I guess it's smart to order medium rare because then you can always have it cooked a little more, but medium. You don't want to be that girl, cooked. do you? No. You're gonna send I never back. have been. Have, I, you, I was a waitress. Do, do you, I, you don't send food back? No, never. Me either. Never. I don't do that. I served for years and I, I couldn't stand that. I'll just smolder quietly, silently. Mm. Be judging. Judging people. Yeah. Well, of course, we are now fully into the holiday season. Mm -hmm. Hanukkah is almost over and Christmas is right around the corner. One of my favorite holiday events is Shop with a Cop. You may have seen our pictures online and noticed that pretty much every person, whether they're a cop or a kid, is smiling big time. The event involves more than 100 children shopping with $100 gift cards at Walmart with law enforcement officers from the county police department, the sheriffs, the community college, and the city of Annapolis. The generous folks at the Annapolis and Fort Smallwood Optimist provided the gift cards and also volunteers to help wrap the gifts after the shopping was done. Outback Steakhouse was kind enough to serve breakfast for everyone and provide a place to wrap presents. More steak. Well, the holidays are all about the kids, Kristen, and they had a blast. Oh, it looks like it. And I tell you, it sounds like a great program. Dave. It was. It oh. was cool. because I was going around, you know, doing the you know photography and the video and stuff. And imagine you're at a super Walmart and every aisle you go down, there's a police officer and a kid with a basket full of toys and I stuff. I love it. And you know what? I bet you the cops are the ones that had the most fun. They, they, well, you can, the, I'll tell you, a picture speaks a thousand words yeah. and you look at it and they are just, they were loving it. And uh, um, I, one thing that, that came to mind to me, you know, remember when we were kids and they would have these shows where they'd have the shopping sprees mm -hmm. and they'd have the timer and they, they should bring those back. Oh yeah. So if you had a, if you had a hundred dollar gift certificate oh, to Walmart, what would you get? Uh, I think I'd go to seconds. electronics. Okay. I don't know what it, it would be, but I can you can knock it out real fast. Yeah. That would be what, like um, four DVDs and four CDs, roughly? You know what, though? Can I just say, I think I'd just donate it to somebody. I don't need anything. Oh. I don't. Oh, I'm not just saying that, that either. I'm not trying to My get the feels or anything here, but I'm just saying, for real, I don't need anything. I'd rather give it to someone who could use it. That is super sweet. You know what? I would buy a bunch of dog and cat stuff and then take it to SPCA. That's oh, come on. Now you're getting ridiculous. No, I'm, I'm thinking now. You now that I've had would, some time. You know what I would do? What would you do? I'd get $100 worth of ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> you'd eat those ice cream sandwiches. I'd fill up you? an entire cart full of ice cream sandwiches. And then you'd find Dave out in the parking lot of Walmart in his car really happy. <laughs> I'd have to eat them because I can't fit them all in my freezer. And they'll melt if you don't do something. So. How many could I, How many do you think I could fit in my freezer? In your freezer? Probably like 40? Sure, easily. How many can I get for $100? I, I don't know, we could go find out. We're gonna do the math and we're gonna figure this out. <laughs> we can get the... Tim Altamari and go find Yes, out. let's do a segment. <laughs> I love it. I Let's love do it. it. Let's do it. Ice cream, you gotta admit, ice cream sandwiches are good. They are good. Okay. But I'm gonna stick with my do-gooder attitude and I'm gonna get the cat. I can't stuff. even compete with that. I'm That's sorry. amazing. Wow. <laughs> well, Dave, you came to the show wearing your, your jacket and tie. Yes. I'm on my suit and tie. Suit and tie. 
Okay. Mm. And some local kids are learning about the same thing. Students at Nantucket Elementary School in Crofton showed off their fancy duds to County Executive Steve Shue, and they were looking sharp. The students are part of the 14-member Gentlemen's Group, sponsored by school counselor Todd Stanzione. Now, it's not just about suits and ties. The boys also learned how to be polite, ask intelligent questions, and stay calm in different situations. It looks like we have some future political candidates here, huh, Dave? I'm surprised you didn't take the easy one there. Why? You know, they learn how to be polite. Learn they learn how to stay calm in, in situations. Calm I in situations. I thought you were going to say I needed to well, yeah, be in that club I, I just or didn't want to go there. But I, I'm not, you are so charitable we're today. We're the holidays, Dave. I know. I'm not being mean. Is Santa in here somewhere? Yeah, he's, he's watching. He's always watching. I'm not trying to get on that naughty list. No, 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 no sirree. But can I tell you, I used to, I used to work as a Disney princess. You could hire me to come Why to your... does that not surprise me? <laughs> There's no photos, so you're not going to find any. Uh, and I would go, any. people would hire me for their, their children's birthday parties. And we also would take time to teach them about, it's not about how you look. It's about being, a, being a princess is about being polite and being kind and um, making sure that you are um, always up to task on your chores. And so. Which princess were you? Ariel. Oh. I would sing. I did Cinderella. So my a couple granddaughters, times. I, I I took them to, I don't know, it was let's not name the store, but it was a, a store with lots of toys. <laughs> and uh, we're going down the aisle with all the dolls and stuff and I, I say, you know, do you want this one? Do you want this princess? That's not a princess, that's such and such. And I mean they all oh, look yeah. the same. Yeah, they do. But they have like slight a different color hair or right. something. And it, there's right. like what is the one where there's, well, there's like the girl a one and two? A one and two? Or two, somebody two. There's Thing Ariel. one, thing two? No, no, no. Oh. Let's name the princesses. There's Ariel, Cinderella, okay. Sleeping Beauty, Belle, um, po Pocahontas. You're missing some Jasmine. One. Jasmine. Right. Okay, you're getting closer. Um, oh, the girl from The Princess and the Frog, and I don't remember her name. T well, Tia Tiara? Well, I'm telling you, these, these princesses are very complicated, and for the lay person like myself, right. you have no chance. Ooh. And you are going to make a big mistake. You better make sure that the kid points to that princess, and that's the one you get, because if you get the wrong princess, you're done. Well, you better brush up. Yeah. Quiet. We're going to take a quick break, <laughs> and when we return, we'll talk to State's Attorney Wes Adams before Kristen gets carried away. <laughs> take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town, and we'll be right back. You act surprised. Mm. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect <laughs> parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back. Returning to Week in Review this week, we have State Attorney Wes Adams. How are you, sir? I'm good, Kristen. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yes. Well, we're happy you're here, especially because we are at your one-year anniversary here as State Attorney. Yep. And so we would have to ask, first off and foremost, take us through some of your accomplishments over the past year. Well, I think that the best thing that's happened so far is really being able to rebuild the relationships between the police and the state's attorney's office. I mean, we've really started to develop an outstanding crime-fighting team, uh, something that's you know, really just shown up recently in the historic heroin bust. We uh, were able to confiscate almost three keys, the largest heroin bust in Anne Arundel County history. And you know, just coming into office and, and building that relationship and developing the partnership between myself and the, the sheriff and the police so that we can do a good job getting the drug dealers off the street. 
And most recently, we've had some action with the Heroin Task Force. If you can brief us on that as well. Sure. The governor just, I had been working with the governor's office on you know, sort of recommendations and best practices. And we met a number of times over the past year. And some of the recommendations from the state's attorney's office in particular, we were looking to add a RICO statute, which is a really powerful prosecution tool to help uh, attack the organization of crime. Um, and again, you know, leading back to what we just That's saw. That's what they use in mafia cases, right? Uh, RICO is originally started with organized crime cases. And, you know, it gives you an opportunity to really bring in and paint the offender for all of the acts he's doing rather than limit them to just a particular drug deal or anything else like that. So a jury would really get a full sense of the type of damage that a dealer is doing to the, to the community. And once again, I, I, we've had many guests on where you've talked about our fight against heroin here in the county. One of the repetitive themes that we've noticed is that this is an all-inclusive fight. This has come from uh, police, from state's attorney, from the Department of Health, and how important it has been for everyone to come together, county executive, um, to fight against heroin for our county. Well, and it's huge. We met, you know, we meet as a big group, when, and when you sit around the table, it's not just the county executive, or it's not really just the state's attorney and, and the police chief. We've got the health department, we've got the schools. Dr. Arlotto has somebody there. Jen Lin Chan, Dr. Chen is out you know, giving their recommendations. And, you know, to be able to work with all the other agencies and, and to especially have the backing of the county executive, it's tremendous. You know, he helped fund for me a dedicated heroin prosecutor. That prosecutor's enabled me to increase the number of heroin prosecutions from about 140 to, and we're not quite final through the year, but we're gonna look at maybe over 200 heroin prosecutions. And this is at the felony level. We're not talking about the addicts. We're talking about the people who are dealing the drugs. And even the way you look at the way my office approaches it, it's not, you know, I'm a prosecuting agency, but we work with, we're out trying to talk to people about never becoming an addict in the first place. We are trying to rehabilitate those who are just caught up in the addiction of it. So even our agency works at all three pieces of trying to combat this epidemic, which, you know, it, from the tip of South County all the way up to the northern borders in Brooklyn, it affects everybody. When you, when you took office, you had certain goals in place uh, to reduce recidivism, to reduce plea bargaining, and to um, enhance sentencing. Uh, how do you do that, and what are some things that you're working on right now to achieve those goals? Well, Probably about two or three months into, the, into my tenure here as state's attorney, we started working on reorganizing units. And in particular, the one unit I wanted to build was a conviction integrity unit, or a unit that dedicates itself to maintaining uh, supervision and, and observation over cases once we get that guilty verdict. Uh, and in particular, with the parolees that are the type of people that are coming out and, and committing repeat offenses, I have now two prosecutors in place whose primary function is to monitor these offenders and to really watch them like a hawk and to prosecute any of the violations with the idea that, you know, we're bringing these, it's great that someone gets a chance to rehabilitate, but if they're not going to conform with the, with the expectations that, you know, that we need here in the county, that they'll be held accountable. So not only that, we've worked a little bit more on uh, using our mandatory sentences. We had the great uh, sentenced back first, our first 10 without in a long time, where our uh, repeat drug dealer, Brooklyn Park, uh, had been dealing heroin, his second offense. He was saddled with a 10 without parole. And then most recently, we had the McDonald case, where, you know, this, uh, it's, a, it's a murder case that took nine years to bring. We, it took us five years just to get enough evidence to charge Mr. McDonald. It had been through motions and mistrials. Uh, we took it over. Uh, Jason Knight, who's the chief of my violent crimes unit, we, and Karen Anderson, one of my other assistants, we got a first-degree murder verdict, and Judge Harris sentenced him to life without parole, plus an additional 45 years. Um, just he this past ain't coming week. out. Nope. No. no, and that's really what the effort is. The way you really improve plea bargains is to make sure that you have strong sentences after going to trial. Um, and, and just to, for people who don't know, uh, in the past, the office in Anne Arundel County has been seen as too reliant on plea bargains, meaning you, you make a deal, the person does not end up in jail. Is that a correct interpretation of what's going on and well, what was going on? What was happening is that any plea was acceptable. And it, what I've really focused on is having my prosecutors learn to evaluate a case 
through trials. And, and when you take a case to trial, you learn, you, you get the pulse of the community as to what's acceptable behavior and really what isn't. And that helps drive what a case, and as we talk about it in prosecutors, what a case is worth in terms of uh, a potential sentence that's offered. And so by trying cases and working and seeing how the juries are reacting to the evidence that we're putting forward, it allows us to make better recommendations to the judges when we do have to plea cases. Well, you've had a very successful first year. We thank you for your service as well as your office, um, all your staff, prosecutors. Thank you so much for joining us on the program again this, this time and happy holidays to you and your family. Thank you, Kristen and Dave. It's, been, uh, it's great to be here. I wish you guys a very happy holiday season and uh, to, all the, to all the residents of Anne Arundel County. We're looking forward to a safer new year. Absolutely. Thank you and uh, we'll be right back with more Week in Review right after this. So you see, son, good manners are important. Should I go through it again? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. Always say please, thank you, you're welcome. Excuse me, sit up straight, hold doors open for ladies. The doors locked, knock first. Don't burp, don't swear, don't stare, don't use bad language. You talk with your mouthful, keep your elbows off the table. What table? Don't interrupt. Cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. On the bus, give your seat up to anybody who has trouble standing. Bottom line, treat others the way you want to be treated. Got it? Got it. Good talk. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier. And it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Welcome back. Last week we told you about how the Department of Public Works is getting ready for snow, and this week Sarah Gannon is down at Southern District Road Operations to tell you about a new snow removal technique that's a little easier on the environment. Sarah? Thanks, Kristen and Dave. We are getting ready for, yeah, the dreaded word, snow. We are here with DPW today, and they're going to share with us some new technology that they have coming our way to help with the snow. Today I'm here with Jim Small from the St. Margaret's Yard. Thanks Jim for uh, meeting me today. You're um, can you tell us about the new process that the county is going to be doing on the roads um, before it gets really bad, I guess you could say. Yes. Um, basically this year we are going to be doing salt brine, which is going to cut down on our road salt. The idea with the salt brine is to get out there early, two, to, two, uh, two days before, pre-treat the roads like the state highways, and you'll see the familiar white lines going down the road. And basically what that does is it keeps the snow and the ice from adhering to the blacktop. It gives us a little bit more time so that when we come out with the plows, we can do a clean push instead of having hard packed snow. Once we do the pre-treatment, we let it set, once the snow hits, we let it set, we let the cars work it in, soften it up, and then we'll hit it with our plows. And basically, that's it in a nutshell. It, uh, it, it's gonna cut down on our road salt. We're not gonna have to be out there constantly salting. Uh, with the pretreatment, it's one ton of salt, makes a thousand gallons of salt brine, uh, instead of running a 10 ton dump truck out there and mm -hmm. just pouring it to the roads. So it's a lot more environmentally friendly and uh, cost effective. Um, how long does it take to produce this product? Uh, I can produce 5,000 gallons in about two hours. Now all of the um, districts, uh, road districts, are going to be doing this, correct? That's correct. Uh, we, we have the processing plant here, so what I do is I do the manufacturing here, then we load it onto each individual truck. We have one truck for each district right now. Uh, they will take it to their yards, and they have storage tanks there that they'll use and it makes it, uh, it's a little bit more efficient that way because they can just go from their yard to their assigned route. Can you give the viewers some tips um, of what to do and what not to do when, this, when it snows for road, for, for you, the purposes for your team and for the county teams out there on the roads plowing? Uh, well, my first, my first thing is when you see this salt brine truck and you can see the salt, the, uh, the sign on the back, stay back because this is liquid salt and it's going to get on your cars and it's it's going to it's going to make a mess okay. um, once the roads are once the roads are pre-treated uh, just give it time to work once the snow starts just if you don't have to be out there stay off the roads let the guys work if we're stuck in traffic we can't push snow we can't sure. throw salt um, so just just stay home if you don't have to be out there on the road well, hopefully we won't have a bad winter, but you um, never know. <laughs> hopefully we will have a bad winter. Well, yeah, we have a new <laughs> toy to play with. So, well, thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. And back to you in the studio. 
Thanks, Sarah. So, Dave. Yes. It's holiday season. It is a big deal Happy right now. Holidays. Happy holidays. Happy. We'll talk about a crooner that was in my a little most, bit. That was my most on tone, on pitch you sound I've done all season. I felt a tear. Right here. Right here. Did you know we went over 50 episodes in, I guess, in our season? We're over 50 hey, episodes. Congrats. Bam. Boom. You wouldn't even know, right? No, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Doesn't even feel like work anymore. I know. It's it's a, just, we're having so much fun, we forgot we're we, working. We forgot. Yep. Um, so it's always a big deal in the box office this time of year. Yes. And there's some films out there. Of course, everyone is so excited for The Last Hunger Games. No, just kidding. Um, Star Wars. Are you a Star that? Wars fan? What's Star Wars? Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm a Star Wars fan. Yeah. I'm geeking out. You're, you're I've geeking seen. Out. I think I've watched. I try to be the first person in my group of friends to post trailers of Star Wars. Oh, online. see, I know some people that don't want to watch any trailers. That's no. Don't I want to. I want. I want everything. Okay. I, I've read everything. I've seen all the. Tra I think I've seen. What is there like four trailers now or oh different goodness. versions? There's one that's Japanese and it's got Japanese writing on it and stuff. And you don't understand so. it, but you just want to see it. Yeah, I mean the thing that the thing. Look, I'm not a purist when it comes to movies. So okay. I'm gonna be totally fine if apparently they they kind of. It's not the same story, you know. The characters are not exactly the same. It's not. It doesn't fit the narrative. Um, that's fine with me. Well, as sometimes long as it's you have to adjust movie, for the times, you yeah. know. Like I didn't unfortunately get to see The Wiz last week, but right. I heard that there were some. Uh, little modern touches that they included into the script to make it more appealing for a wider audience because yeah, yeah. you want you know it's you want younger kids to get yeah, into Yeah, they the did Wiz that with well. Annie. I mean, when you do remakes, it's it's important to do that. But I heard Dorothy did the Nene. I got really excited. I can do the Nene. Let me see it. Watch, watch me, me whip, whip, whip. Watch, watch me Nene. Nene. Watch me whip. I whip. did it. That's all watch I did. That's it. That's it. Watch me. Watch me. Okay. Okay. Sorry. okay. So anyway, have you seen Star Wars, Kristen? No. I, I am, I'm supposed to be schooled on it very soon because I'm supposed to go as well to go see Star Wars. Well, now, but. maybe maybe our audience can help me out here because our our director, Chuck Duncan, you can find him on online <laughs> if you want to question Hotchka. this. Hotchka.com. He told Kristen to watch three, four, and five. No, 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 uh, no, no. Four, five, and six, not one, two, and three. And then Will said we could just watch four through six and one and three, not wait two. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I'm the getting... original movies are three, four, and five. No, I thought it was. I'm so confused right okay, now. Four, five, and six. Yeah. Four. This one is episode seven. All right, so, so the great okay. voice from beyond has spoken. No, Star so. Star Wars Jedi Masters. Yeah, I know right. something. Wait, was that, so Yoda? was that Yoda? Was that Yoda? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this Star is so Wars off the rails they right are. Now. <laughs> No, but okay, four, five, and six are the original movies. Right. One, two, and three are the newer movies that some people didn't like as much. I did like. See, and that's what I find confusing because I thought one through I six know. was how they filmed it, and now I'm not understanding. And now the newer ones are going, I believe, even further back. Right. So when you say one, I'm not sure if you mean in the succession they were filmed or right. in the story. It's right. Very so that is correct. Chuck is correct. You need to see. Uh, Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And that's four, five, six. Correct. And then Will was saying we need to watch one and three, but not two. So I guess that was the awful. I'm one. probably going to get this wrong, but I think that's the Jar Jar Binks one. And people have people make a big deal um, about Jar Jar Binks. I just want to see this Cantina. They're scene. all good. That's what They're I want to see. They're all great. You should watch all of I them. I like the song. Dun, 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 Yeah, so and I... And they redid that for the new movie, too. Are they dead? And so the way it works, Are they nay nay and whipping? Maybe. Maybe. You never know. You never know. But so what they're doing with the next installments is they're going to have different directors doing each movie. Really? So, yeah. So J.J. Abrams is doing the first one that's coming out in, okay. next week. Um, and... Uh, you know, he's done, he did the reboot of Star Trek, I believe, with the, you know, they did all the Star Trek guys when they were young. Um, and he's a great director, so I have no doubt it's going to be a, a great movie. So don't worry about all the rules and regulations, just enjoy it. Do we think there's possibility of Harrison Ford directing one? Oh, okay. Wouldn't that be pretty cool? That'd be cool. I, I, no one's more familiar with the story. Yeah. But, Maybe. you know, there's Star Wars and then there's Frank Sinatra. Great transition. Thank you, thank you. Great. You transition. wanted to talk about Frank Sinatra. I did. You watched the Frank Sinatra special. I'm a music lover. Special. I think that he's appealing to a very wide array of people, and that many many artists would consider him an inspiration. What's the best Frank Sinatra song? 
The best one? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, come back to me on that one. Wow. I'm, I'm trying to think of what I would pick. That's a, that's a heavy question. Witchcraft. No, witchcraft is good. I always liked um, something, something Stupid with his um, daughter that he did with Nancy, the duet. I like that one. Um, but I was also thinking there, there's a sad song that I really like, and I'm trying to think of what it's called. It's a ballad. I, it's not coming to me right now. We do it in mood swings. Um, but anyway, what's yours? Ooh, you got me on that one. You should have been thinking about it. I know. This whole time. But see, here's the thing. I really, when it comes to, I'm really into music, just like you are. But I'm more into the 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 instrumentation and the beat and the things like that. I am terrible at remembering the names of songs. Okay, well I feel like you'd be like a it. teach me tonight, like Sinatra guy, or maybe a come fly with me. That's a good Let's one. Let's fly, fly That's away. That's good. One. I like that so one. So they've been doing a lot of stuff right now because this is, of course, what would have been his 100th birthday, mm -hmm. and they had. A lot of great stars doing tributes for Sinatra. Of course, Tony Bennett. Oh, Tony Bennett is still fantastic. It's crazy. I'm like, that man will outlive us all. Yeah. He will. He did. Looks I've got great. The world sounds great. Sounds great. Lady Gaga closed out the show. Of course, mm -hmm. she did New York, New York. And she looks like a normal person now. I'm so grateful for that. Oh, you don't appreciate artistic it's Gaga? Just, it's just too much. The Gaga? Just stop. Just sing. Well, I think that she kind of felt that way, and that's why she took a break. Good. She said she kind of felt swallowed and, you know, it, that she was feeling trapped by it all. And she kept presenting that and realized one day she, that's not her. You know why she felt trapped by it all? Yeah. Because she was wearing raw meat. <laughs> Literally covering trapped. Covering her. And it gets heavy. You can't get out of Girl, it. Girl, you look so good now. No, <laughs> she's totally watching this. Jeez. Um, <laughs> uh, who else was on it? Adam Levine. He did a smooth, nice Sinatra. Usher was great. He did That's Life. Mm -hmm. That's all the people say. Mm -hmm. um, that was great. Uh, Carrie Underwood, she sings Someone to Watch Over Me. Catherine McPhee was fantastic. But like there her. are a few on there that I was like, really? Because they really try to tie in all the Grammy categories and some of the um, Grammy artists that have been nominated with these pre-Grammy concerts. Oh, yeah. So I didn't really like Garth Brooks' take on Sinatra. That's just my feeling. Did Garth Brooks fall down? No, he didn't fall down. He's had a kind of a run of falling down on stage. No, he didn't Tripping fall down. and stuff. I, yeah. Uh, I didn't really like Nick Jonas doing Sinatra. Um, and uh, what was it? Zach Brown. I just... Zach Brown's okay. Yeah, he's a great performer, but not on Sinatra stuff. You know, folks, we're just waiting for Kristen Lagana to be on these shows and to sing Frank Sinatra songs. Please. It's coming Please. any day now. Any day now. You right, will see Kristen right. Lagana on network television. Yeah. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Facebook, YouTube, or Google Plus by simply searching Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county, and we'll see you next time. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi.